I think that's pretty cool. Again, when we can recycle or you know take the byproduct and just feed it right back into the same exact system again. I love it. Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we are going to set up a temporary aluminum, uh, al alclad aluminum production. Um, and it is, like I said, it's just going to be temporary because I will be setting up a permanent um, solution for that. But I want to get that, that alclad made ASAP because uh, that way we can get the hover pack. Um, and once we have the hover pack, you know, then it's just going to open up. Uh, a lot, uh, well, it's going to make life a lot easier for me because then I can f basically fly, hover, etc. when we're building and designing and whatnot. Okay, so um, I've got a, a general plan. I haven't I haven't 100% planned this out, and that's okay because here again, it's just going to be a temporary setup anyway. But what I think we'll do, as you can see, I added a little more concrete pad to this section of our fledgling city here, our factory city. So let's leave, say, like two squares. And we're going to start with a... Uh, oh, oh, actually, I was also going to comment that, and most of you probably already know this anyway, but for those of you who don't, um, September 10th is the date that Satisfactory is going to come out at early access. So that's very exciting. That gives us um, about... Two months, two more months uh, to continue this series. And so, yeah, very excited about that. Okay, let's set this assembler right here. And we want to set the Alclad aluminum sheet. All right, so this is going to take aluminum ingots and copper. The copper is absolutely lemon squeezy on, uh, you know, for that. So what we're going to do is just take ourselves a smelter. And we're going to put the smelter right here except for we have to turn it this way and then run that right into there that should be straight okay so you need 10 copper ingot per minute so we need to set you to 10 and that'll require 10 copper ore i don't remember exactly how much copper ore i have on this line right here, but uh, quite a bit more than 10. I think I have something more like, well, that's a 370 line. So yeah, we have we have tons. Uh, I'm not even pulling 100 copper off that, if even that. Okay, so uh, let's get ourselves a splitter. And we want to line up like this, and then just go straight up onto this copper line. Make sure. We're facing south. I'll just pop that in. Let's put a lift here and just lift it up till it lines up with that. And hook it up. Nothing could be easier. Okay, so that takes care of a copper. Now the other side of this though is a little more involved. So Next thing we need to provide is aluminum ingots. So for that, we're going to need a refinery. So let's get ourselves a refinery. I want the outputs on that side, the inputs on this side. Let's lock it in place for a second. Maybe move it over to there so it's lined up. Yep, that's lined up nicely. And we'll slide it forward to there. So we need to set you to uh, aluminum ingots. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. Nope, 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 nope. I'm getting ahead of myself. We need a foundry next, not a refinery. Okay, yeah. So turn it this way. Lock that in place for a second. And I'm just going to, because this is temporary, I'm going to scooch it up pretty close. 
and then go straight in there. Okay, and then we want to set this to aluminum ingots. And we want to, uh, I want, let's see, it wants 30 per minute. Right, okay. There we go. Let's color both of those yellow since they are underclocked. You're going to need aluminum scrap and silica. Okay, we have... I, I think what I'm going to do, because this is temporary, and I have a silica machine over there that's just sitting over there doing nothing because we only grab a little bit of silica now and then. I'm just going to... I'm just going to come right off of... Right off of there. But let's... Let's get the refineries in place first and then we'll worry about that. Okay, now we need a refinery. Um... Inputs on this side, outputs on that side. Okay, let's move this back to there. And this is going to be for aluminum scrap at 45 per minute. So we will set that to aluminum scrap at 45 per minute. And it'll output 45. Now it's also going to output water too, and we're going to actually recycle that. Okay, so that takes care of the first connection. All right, now you need um, alumina solution, which also uh, and coal, which also requires a refinery. So let's grab another refinery. And we'll line it up with this one. Oh, uh, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna move this one back to here. Well, maybe to there. So we need to produce 30 alumina solution. Okay, and this will also have a byproduct of silica at 12 and a half per minute, which we will also recycle. Um, yeah, you need the silica. So you need 37 and a half silica per minute. So that, I have a constructor over there that's producing exactly 37 and a half silica per minute. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the output of this silica, uh, no, sorry, this silica, wait, yeah, this one, to the mix, and in doing so, we won't completely exhaust everything over there. Not that it really matters anyways, because here again, this is temporary. If it was permanent, then it would definitely matter, because then we would basically have no spare silica. Okay, so let's deal next with this water output. So this is going to output 15 water per minute. Um... Let's see, you're, you're doing 30 alumina solution per minute, right? And you need 30 alumina coming in. Okay, so for that, we're just going to go and do a pipe straight in. And we're good to go there. We'll hook up our, our dry hookup. Whoops, uh, dry hookups later. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. And this guy needs... 45 water per minute. We're going to provide 15 of that 45 water by recycling it from that machine. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a cross junction in and slide it way there. Okay. And then we're going to Come down here to, I think that's position. Let's back it up to there. Uh, 
and then we will bring this to here and that into there. Oop, I still have fly mode on here. Okay. That looks good. And then, so we're going to still need another 30 water for this guy. So, let's get back here. And I'm going to stand up here. This is a blueprint. And just that piece is there. Okay. So let's also remove those pieces. And we'll zoop these ones back in. Oops. Like so. Let's grab ourselves a water extractor and we'll hold control to get that lined up. Bring it back to maybe there-ish. We'll take that back apart again because it's flipping. Um, what in the world just happened there? <laughs> How did that happen? I don't know. Can't explain it. Oh, you know what? I think when I was trying to connect this pipe, I must have double clicked it or something. That's... That's not straight. Come down to here. And you're right there. Move you over to there. Move you over one more. That's straight. I think that's right. It's close enough to not be an eyesore. Oh, for Pete's sake, hold on. I'm not paying attention. So what else is new, right? Okay, here, let's do this. Let's get get rid of you. We want you lined up there and then back to. All right, let's try this again. So you come to here. You go into there. And you go into there. Straight enough not to be an eyesore. Okay, now we want to set this to 30, uh, 30 per minute, right? Because the it needs a total of 45 and it's getting 15 from the output of this, 15 water output. Okay, now. You need silica. We're going to provide 12 and a half silica from this refinery. So let's get a lift on here. Have it go out that way. Get a lift on there and have it go out that way. to think about this for a second <clears throat> um okay 
Let's grab uh, a line and just bring it out to... Maybe there. Yeah, let's try that first. Now we want a... We want a merger. Okay, I know what I'm going to do. We're going to line the merger up with this pipe. Just like that. Okay. Um, this should hook right in there. Perfect. Okay. Thirty-seven and a half silica. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to take this conveyor pole here, and we want to go. I think to there. It looks to me like we're out one too far. That looks right. Excellent. Okay. And then, of course, we'll merge the other silica. Uh, you know, from the other location. Now, um, I think this will work. It should. My only... thought is no it should be fine it should be fine never mind that should work okay cool so one of the nice things about this setup is we're recycling the byproduct from this machine over to this machine and then from this machine over to the foundry so that's really really cool i like that i like it all right now let's see what do you need you need some coal you need 15 coal per minute um, trying to think if I have any available coal. I don't have any coal coming this far over. I did at one point, but I, I took it down because I wasn't using it. Let's go over and look and see what the inputs are. While I'm thinking about it too, I'm going to go organization, storage, and we're just going to throw the aluminum clad business right into here. Okay, so let's see. We need we need coal. We need silica, and then the bauxite itself, which we'll do last. So I think what I'm going to do here is let's um, let's remove this and grab. A full piece and just run that down that way we're gonna make ourselves a a little conveyor road I might change later on change this to um, 
the half blocks, but for now we'll just do the full blocks. We are going to have to take into account this, so we want to stay right along the edge of the road here and go through this space. You know, now that I think about it, though, we might as well just half block all of that. There's no reason not to. Oh, you're going to be weird on that, aren't you? That's all right. I don't think I'm actually going to worry too much about that. But I do want... No, that's good. Why do you... Why do you do that? Just stay... Stay the same way as your buddies. Don't get it. Okay, we're going to need to go... Oh, I'm out of concrete. It's from all that pad I laid out there. We'll see if that's enough. Alright, so my plan for the bauxite... And this, again, this is... um. Oh, we've got coal right here. Oh, yeah, okay. See, everything coming in here is just stalled because... You know, it just fills up the storage and then I pull out of it when I need it and then it refills it up and then it stops again. So this, these resources, as long as we're not completely tapping them out, are really available. Um, so we just need to split off... Well, the silica is already being produced and I'm not going to reproduce that because here again this is temporary. So why don't we actually start with that? So I'm going to... I'm going to put this here. Except for I completely did not line that up right. And then I'm going to put this there. Now we'll just do a little ramp up to that and then bring you over to here. We're not even close to needing 60 of those per minute, so that's good to go. All right, let me get this run all the way down. All right, I got the silica line. Uh, I decided to move this up two because it needed to be two uh, on that end, and that way it's just all level and we don't have a bunch of inclines and declines. That takes care of the silica. We need to get coal over there next. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to split off. We could... No, the more I think about this, we could sushi this. Eh, I don't think we need to sushi it. Never mind. Sushi meaning put more than one item on the belt. We are going to do that, though, f for the bauxite. Because, again, it's temporary. I probably won't sushi the bauxite for whatever our permanent, you know, setup is going to be for this. You're the one that, uh, wait, which one of you needs coal? You do. Yeah, you're the one that needs the coal. Okay. And you're the one that needs the bauxite. Roger that. Okay. So we're going to tap into this coal here, and I'm just going to simply put a splitter up here. I'm 
probably put it. Yeah, let's just put that right there. Move it over to here. Take this and this down momentarily. Hook this back up. Oh, save. Alright, and then what we'll do is grab a line off of here. that there for a minute yeah that's where we want that oh this needs to go up though doesn't it yes it does all right leave that there for the moment what I'm gonna actually do then is this This one's going to have to go up at an incline because we don't have enough room to use a, a lift. Um, we probably better hold it back to there. Yeah, there's no way it was going to go any sharper than that. And remember, we only need like 10 coal per minute anyway. That's a one... T uh, well, no, I guess that's being split off of something else. But this only takes in 15 per minute, and this is loaded with black powder. So it'll only occasionally kick in. And even, <clears throat> even if it stalled that out for momentarily, it's not a big deal. We're not worried about that anyway, because, again, this is temporary. On this side, let's grab a lift and point it that direction. And I think it needs to go up one or two. I think it needs to go up two. Let's grab this, move it back to, make sure that's lined up, I think it is, yep, and go up three. Okay, that gets our coal into there. Into 15 coal per minute. Okay. Still, we got plenty. All right. So that hooks up everything except for bauxite. And, of course, power. So here's what I'm going to do with the bauxite. I'm going to temporarily sushi it with sulfur. Because I've got this sulfur line coming in, and, you know, just like that coal. Or do we want to sushi it on the... Well, see, the thing is, though, that coal is already being split off with something... With, with another main coal line, whereas this is just coming all the way straight here, the, the sulfur is. And in order for that to work, we're going to need to use this awesome sink that I already put out here when I was kind of planning this. So let's remove this window here. Uh, go to walls. Find a conveyor wall. Put that there. And we're going to... 
going to think about this for a second. We're going to smart split this. So I think to do that, we're going to need to come down onto the floor. Let's change this to a smart splitter. Put the input on that side. Okay. <coughs> Let's get rid of those. Okay, so for the splitter, we want the center output to be sulfur, the right output to be overflow. So that way it'll just direct the sulfur to the awesome sink, and then the left output's going to be bauxite. Now, we need a total of 15 sulfur per minute from there, and I don't remember how much bauxite we need per minute. Let's go take a look. We need 30 per minute. So this should all, this should all still work fine with a... Uh, just a mark one conveyor system. Right, okay. So what we'll do is um, let's put a lift here. That should be a nice 90. And then we're going to run this to here. Is that straight? Uh, I don't think so. I think we need to move the smart splitter over. Yeah, we definitely need to move it over. Splitter input on that side. Should be lined up on this seam here. Okay, yeah, so bring that back to there. Uh, uh, that's really weird. Okay, that reconnected and we have to reset this now okay so center is sulfur right is overflow left is bauxite that should be straight it's a beautiful thing Now, let's bring this around to here. Go back to and in there. All right, very good. We need to get some power to you. Looking good. That way we're actually putting that sulfur to use instead of having it just sit there and do absolutely nothing. Now, granted, we're not going to give very many points at this point from raw sulfur, but it's better than nothing. Okay, so let's finish setting things up on this end, and then we'll, we'll go uh, to the other end and get that all set up. What we want to do here is we want to... We 
could run this one down low, but then we're going to have a problem crossing the road. Uh, in fact, I should probably test to make sure the truck can get under that even. If it can't, I'll, I'll raise that up. I'm not going to do that right now. That's something I'll worry about later. If I even worry about it at all, because again, temporary. I know you guys are probably tired of hearing me say that now. But I'm just trying to share my thought process with you is all. So, okay. And you know, that, that being the case, I think I am going to just... This needs to be over one more. I'm going to run it on the lower section there. So let's grab one of these. Can you make that? Yes, you can. Come on, you can do it. There you go. That's all straight. Beautiful. Okay. Let's run this over. We didn't really need this pole for this belt, but it's, it's there to support that belt, aesthetically speaking, not in reality. Well, reality is a relative term anyway. Since there is no physics in this game. This game would be very, very challenging to play if it had actual physics. That would be interesting, to say the least. Alright, so we need to get over to here. That, we're not going to be able to make that curve. Alright, so what I'm going to do here is put that there and then move it back probably to there. <clears throat> okay, and then we will come to there. But go back to. And then we should be able to just do this. I think that's just what the doctor ordered. Okay, so we're done on this end, except for the power, of course. Um. I might just run that straight from here. Let's, uh, let's see, where's the connectors on that side? Connectors on that side. Connect. It looks like most of the connections are actually on the other side of these machines. So that being the case... Uh, let's run you right to here. And what I'm actually going to do is disconnect this for the moment. Until we're ready to fire it up. But we'll get the rest of it wired. Um, let's use this seam here. Is that clipping? Oh, for goodness sakes. It's, uh... Is it clipping? I mean... <laughs> it's so damn close that it's not safe. We'll put it that way. 
Well, I guess what we could do in in that case is let's just extend this out. Get rid of you and you can stay there. We'll run this pole down to here. Now it's clear. And then we'll just wait to connect this one to this one when we're ready to start up. Okay. Let's bring you over to Hither. And then we'll bring you... Let's line you up right here. Line you up right here. Except for that I need to stay on this seam. Okay, you we will bring over to, well, let's see, that's going to clip through the thing. So I think what we'll do here is we'll put you right there, and we can go there and there. That's also clipping. You mother. All right, change the plan. I'm going to put you right here. There we go. And then we'll bring you over to here. That'll probably work. We line it up with this one. No clipping. No clipping. Okay, power's all connected except for actually turning it, uh, connecting it down here. I forgot to. Well, everything here is actually underclocked except for the assembler itself. So, there we go. Now, um, I will meet you guys up on top of the mountain there, next to uh, the bauxite deposit, with a Mark I refiner, or not a uh, refiner, miner, and we'll hook things up on that end. See you over there. All right, guys. We are here, so let's shoot up to the top. At some point, I want to cover cover this uh, big little con uh, big little <laughs> this conveyor road in too. Make it look kind of cool. Up we go. Okay, so the box site's right there. And there's usually bad bats around here. I hear them, but I don't see them. Hmm. Weird. Okay. Let's get some foundations. And press control. that to go, yeah, on the other side. Right, we will get ourselves a Mark 1 Miner. And what we're going to have to do is remove that so we can look at the ore 
to get that to lock in. All right, let's go over here. And we want to tap into this sulfur line right here, which is on a Mark II. So I'm guessing it's going to be right about here. <clears throat> okay, so we're looking directly south. We're pretty damn close to that. This is our sulfur belt. We want to put a smart... No, we don't need a smart splitter. We just need a merger, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we want to put a merger here. And point directly to the north, because control's not doing anything. That should still be connected. Sulfur's still moving through. It is. <clears throat> All right, I don't know if this is going to be how level this is going to be. It looks to me like it's probably going up a bit. Yeah, it's definitely going up a bit. So that means we could bring this lift up. So right now there's two markers showing. So that's where it was before. Let's go to here. That's, that's okay. I think that's okay. I mean, close enough, right? Close enough to not be an eyesore. <clears throat> it's very difficult to get um, miners lined up because for whatever reason, they're... I, I don't know why um, coffee stained hasn't made it so that miners when you place them down are lined up perfectly on the grid but they're not so maybe that's more difficult for them to do than it may seem to a non-coding layperson such as myself okay so we just need to get power over here now this is going to produce 120 per minute um we really we only need I think we only needed 40 per minute. But you know what? Why don't we just send the full 120, which is actually only going to be 60 because unless I upgrade the belt, which I don't really need to. Yeah, the belt capacity is going to be... It, it's a 120, but since we're merging onto it, it's actually only going to be, be able to transport 60 sulfur and 60 of this per minute. So we might as well down clock this to 60. We only actually need 40. And so the extra 20 will just go out the overflow uh, and into the sink. Very good. Okay, so we just need to get power over here. Um, and there's a power pull right there. Is that going to... Oh man, that's going to clip right through that coal line, isn't it? Nothing's ever friggin' easy. Okay, let's hop down here. Oh. What? Oh. That's not correct. We can't have that. You know what we could do, though? Why don't we do this? Let's put a power pole right here. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to come back over this way. And we're going to 
hook you up. To there. I'm going to bring you around to here. And you up to there. Well, actually, no. Let's do... You to there. And then you to there. I know that's kind of jank, but... Which, you know, what else am I supposed to do? <laughs> it's just kind of in a weird spot. So, you know, like we've said all along, whenever anything clips through there, we just have to assume that it's using conduit. Because sometimes you just can't really avoid it. All right, look at this. That's my excuse anyways, and I'm sticking to it. We have, ladies and gentlemen, our very first bauxite mining happened in here on the series. We've never mined this stuff before. Uh, so this is going to merge with that 120 belt. It's going to send a total of 60 per minute on down the line. It's only going to need 40 per minute. And like we talked about, it'll take the extra 20 and throw it into the awesome sink. Now all we need to do is just wait for it to get down there and power up everything on that side and start making all clad aluminum. I'll see you over on the other side. Whee! This is like one of those uh, runaway ramps that you see when you're coming off a mountain pass for trucks. And here comes the box height. We'll make sure it splits off. Should, should work. Yep, going out the left output. While I was waiting, I decided to also add these two quartz lines to the overflow as well uh, for the same reason. Might as well put it to use, put it in the sink. Otherwise, it's just sitting there. So, got that done. Okay, here comes the bauxite and it is being split. Beautiful. Coming out at 60 per minute. And eventually, this line will will back up, and then it'll throw the overflow into the sink as well. All right, guys, here it comes. Let's go ahead and power this thing up. Could increase the clock speed, I guess, of the water until the other one starts feeding it. Yeah, it's not going to quite be able to keep up until until we get the water fully going from or coming from here. And you know what? Now that I think about it, I think I will bump this up until that point. Oh shit! We're in the water. That's okay. Okay, so let's change that to 45 minutes, or 45 per minute, rather. When this uh, starts kicking in, which it is doing so now, I want it to, oh yeah, it's getting plenty of a luminous solution. amount and pipe is 10. All right, let's uh let's set this back down to 30. Let's see if it can keep up. Just have to make sure that this number is 36 or higher. When, at the end of the cycle. And it looks like it is going to be, at least for the moment. I'm going to watch it for just a little bit here. Okay, that seems to be fine. 
Let's go look at you now. So we want to make sure you're getting eight or higher at the end of each cycle, which obviously it is. Okay, that looks good. We have silica coming from both the overflow there and what's coming in from our storage. So it looks like that's pooping out five silica per cycle. Yeah, that should be fine then. As long as these five are completely pass through before these next five get there, we'll never have any kind of a backup on that. All right, let's take a look at this. So you are getting, you just barely got six at the end of the cycle when this needs to be 12. Yeah, it's just, it's like right on target. All right, and then you should be 10 copper per minute, easy peasy. And then you need to be at six at the end of each cycle, which you are barely hitting. So we're good, okay. That's gonna produce 30 alkalides per minute. We already have 114, we need 200 to do the milestone for the hover pack. So it shouldn't be long now. I think that's pretty cool. Again, when we can recycle or, you know, take the byproduct and just feed it right back into the same exact system again. I love it. Won't be too much longer. We're going to have to start adding some more power to our power grid. Uh, the plan for that will be to add fuel refineries because we have a ton of oil that's just sitting out there that we're not using. So yeah, we'll have to start thinking about that pretty quick. And there we go, 200. Fantastic. All right, let's go feed these into the thingamadoodle. Hover pack ready for launch. Milestone reached. The hover pack enables aerial overview of all powered factories as well as easy transport across multi-level buildings by wirelessly connecting to the power grid. Really? I didn't know that. I thought we had to put fuel in it. Oh, that's amazing. All right, let's take a look at um, what we need to make it. Easy peasy. Okay, we just need 40 more aluminum. Um, so I'm gonna gather all this stuff up. Well, actually, I guess I have everything else. I just need the aluminum. So does that mean, I, I would think that that means we have to stay within range, a certain range of the power grid. Oh, I never looked at these. That's cool. Aluminum scrap. I like it. Aluminum ingots. Looks like aluminum to me. And that's the alclad sheets. Cool. Alright, so let's grab all of those. And we need to make this in the equipment bench. One hover pack coming right up. Very nice. Okay, so um, this I guess takes. Does it take the place of the back? It does. All right. Um. 
Okay, allows for vertical movement and hovering in midair to improve ability efficiency factory traversal. Wirelessly connects to nearby power connections such as power poles and buildings for power consumption. Slow fall. Holds space bar after losing connection midair. Okay, so that does imply that we will lose connection if we're too far away. Disable the hover pack. Double tap C while hovering. So hold the space bar after losing connection. Oh, this is nice. See that? Yeah, I thought we were going to need fuel for this. It looks to me like the gauge on the left is indicating how close we are to power. And we're slow falling by holding the space bar. Okay, if you hold down shift, you can get moving pretty good. So it doesn't take power off the cable directly, apparently. What does it say? Um, power poles and buildings for power consumption. But does it more specifically mean, you know, these things? Oh, did that just do... Oh, that's cool. It does like a little zappity-do thing. So you know what I... Th you know what I think is happening here? Um, I think it's charging from that. And then the charge wears off as we get away from it. Interesting. Okay, the thing on the right is showing me that I think the middle button means I'm near a power source. The lightning button when it's on it means I'm not near a power source. And then I don't know what the check mark thingy means. Oh, maybe that means it's good to go. Because I, I thought I just saw it light up. Oh, no, I don't want that. Yeah, okay. So the check mark means we're good to go. I can't pull those up and look at them um, without jumping or hovering. And then as long as it's close enough to a power pull, it just does a little power zap like that to draw some more power as needed. So, okay, so I'm just trying to think. Um, what this means is in order to use this effectively, we're going to need live power put in, you know, in place even before the building itself is done. So that's just going to have to be factored into, you know, all the all of the planning. But this is so nice. I love it. And you know, it doesn't it doesn't feel really OP either just because here again you know, you got to be near power, so I can't just fly across the, the planet willy-nilly. So I like that. I, I actually like that limitation. It's just seems realistic to me, you know. So it took the zap right from the tower itself. I must have a power connector up in that corner because it... That's where it seemed to do a zappity do from.
All right. I love it. Absolutely love it. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. I think what we'll do for the next episode is we will... Just trying to see if I can move roughly the same speed as if I do the little jump thing with the, you know, with the jetpack. Uh, but anyway, definitely you want jetpack, you know, for general... Yeah, this is faster. Moving around. But when we start to do building and things like that, you know, like when we do the architecture for this building, we'll, we'll switch to the hover pack. Okay, so anyway, what I was about to say is I think we'll get back to working on our train in the next episode. The the first uh, the goal for this is to, to build a, a train station to the space elevator for deliveries. But of course, I expect that our train you know, network will expand quite a bit beyond that. Should I even be walking on this thing? I might get zapped. Of course, we don't have any, we don't have any power hooked up to it. I wonder if this can charge the hover pack too. Just for shits and grins. Let's light that thing up. I wonder if that is the word for train in Swedish. All right, if we put this on, does it get power from railroad tracks. It seems like it does. Oh, that's cool. So that means you can use this to travel along railways. Who needs a train? You just need the tracks, man. <laughs> oh, I like that. Okay. It doesn't seem to do the, the zappy thing, though. Okay, let's get out of the water a bit and then approach it again. Okay, yeah, it, it doesn't... Uh... Can we stand on this without getting electrocuted? Yep, I guess so. <laughs> All right, that is neat. It, it's, it's really useful to know that these will work along tracks because quite literally you can just travel along the tracks with the hover pack and have infinite power. Of course, we'll want to ride the train too because that's that's going to be fun. But yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. So let's plan for the next episode. We'll work on the train station, get it set up um, to the space elevator first and then, um, you know, expand it beyond that. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. Ciao.